Thank you very much for the opportunity to address a subject involving religious liberty. I'm very grateful for my colleagues and what they have said already, and especially for Alan Sears and his effort to um, uh, combat the encroachment on religious liberty by our own administration in Washington, D.C. I'm counting on Mr. Sears to be successful with this, or else next year I probably could not address anybody since I will be in prison along with Rick, Pastor Rick Warren. Um, <clears throat> In June of 2002, more than 230 Islamic monuments, including a 400-year-old mosque, were vandalized or destroyed during anti-Muslim riots in the Indian state of Gujarat. Just a few months ago, a Florida pastor, Terry Jones of the Dove World Outreach Center, set fire to copies of the Quran and a depiction of the Prophet Muhammad. In another similar situation, U.S. soldiers burned several copies of the Quran and other Islamic writings in, at a landfill in Afghanistan. In 2001, the Taliban destroyed two monumental Buddhist statues carved into the sandstone cliffs. Massive explosions detonated by religious enthusiasts forever destroyed these works of art. In the United States, an eight-foot cross located deep in the remote Mojave National Preserve, erected by the veterans of foreign wars as a memorial to fallen U.S. soldiers, became the subject of contention when the National Park Service denied a request to place a Buddha shrine in that area. In 2003, Judge Roy Moore, then the J Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, refused uh, a federal order to remove a 5,000-pound granite statue of the Ten Commandments from state property and was subsequently removed from office. Each of these events and hundreds of others like them emphasize both the intensity of religious convictions and the complications that frequently result when public policy collides with religious conviction. Some answers seem obvious. But often complicating factors create a Gordian knot which almost appears to defy human solution. In response, one can wring his hands in consternation and hopelessness, or he can attempt to set just standards equitable for all faiths and ask the human family to inculcate these principles in all religious matters. To that end, this paper offers humble suggestions. I call your attention to two documents. Consider first, one that has already been mentioned twice, the document is that of the United Nations document entitled A Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But let me read what Article 18 actually says. Article 18 says, quote, everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and observation, end of quote. Article 19 adds, quote, everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. That right includes freedoms to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media, regardless of, of frontiers, end of quote. In these declarations, the United Nations is seen at its very best. Well, consider also the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America, which says, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, end of quote. This is America at its best. The government can neither establish a state religion nor can it prohibit the free exercise of one's faith. Both of these declarations recognize the crucial nature of religious liberty. 
Indeed, religious liberty is the foundation, is the fountainhead of all other liberties, and without this freedom, no society is genuinely free. Religious liberty is basic to all the liberties uh, for reasons that will be noted as follow, without, follows. Without fear of contradiction, I vow that it is the most important and significant of all liberties. Here, however, we must insist on a distinction between, quote, religious toleration, end of quote, on one hand, and, quote, religious liberty, end of quote, on the other. I once complained to a statesman about the lack of religious liberty in his country. Offended, he insisted that the country had religious liberty. I responded that what he intended was that a person had a right to remain in the religion of his birth, but not the right to change his faith and not the right to a free marketplace of open discussion of the values and essence of all faith. You see, he tolerated other faiths under some set of circumstances, but the most critical features of religious liberty articulated above in the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights were conveniently ignored. Open discussion in public and private venues and the liberty to change are essential to genuine religious liberty. Well, how does this impact the question of religious symbols on public property? Well, as one who is committed to the idea that faith is more about personal encounter with the living God and less about symbols of any kind, I nevertheless must insist uh, must recognize the importance of symbols to many. Endorsing the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution and the United Nations uh, Declaration of Human Rights means that a government which desires to provide maximum freedom for her constituents must avoid sponsorship of partisan religious symbols in public places. Even states which maintain a state endorse faith must operate with full justice toward religious minorities as outlined in the UN statement above. But by the same token, temporary symbols in public places representing the faith of segments of the population, as long as they pose no immediate physical danger, should be tolerated as a part of religious liberty. Permanent existing symbols should be allowed, as it were, under a grandfathered in uh, solution. At times, the governments of the world should operate with ultimate respect for the peaceful symbols of all faiths. Now, the relationship of this issue to families and family life is that parents attempting to rear children in a culture of death have every right to expect governments to ensure justice and equal opportunity for religious expression, thus aiding the family in its assignment, government or ecclesiastical opposition to publicly exhibited symbols of religious faith is inappropriate since faith and family constitute the foundational element of most social orders and cultures. Thank you and God bless you everyone.